Welcome back to Mead and Cheese, where now it is just myself and Lord Cheese. So we're going to, you know, we're going to have a more intimate chat just while we wait for our special 80s themed guest. Yes, yes, I am excited to get in the 80s themed guest on. Um, He's a lovely guy. He's a very lovely guy. Um, he knows everything about the 80s. He's spiritually from the 80s. So, you know, basically someone who lived it. Been it. Basically, um, yeah. Someone who I think was there in the 80s. In spirit, yeah. In in absolute spirit. Yeah. Maybe not so much reality. Maybe not. No, I think he he's a time traveller. He was... <laughs> From the um, the fifteen eighties. Ah yes, yes, the fifteen eighties, and he landed on the nineteen eighties, and that's why he loves it so much because you know it's so advanced. Yeah, because that's that's what he did. He he built his time machine. He came from the fifteen eighties to the seventeen eighties, and then he got back in his time machine and went to the eighteen eighties, and then. He got frozen in ice for a hundred years and wound up in the 1980s <laughs> by accident. <laughs> and he loved it so much. Uh, but then his time machine malfunctioned and he ended up today and now he can't get back. Yeah, he can't get back. And ever since just a bit too much, you know. Yeah, he, he tried to get back. But after, you know, he was frozen in ice for a hundred years, his time machine just wouldn't work yeah. anymore. But yeah, um, that is a guest for today. But furthermore from that, um, we're here. We're here to talk to you till then. Um, well, I guess we are always the guests of the day. I want a haircut at the minute. It's getting a bit too long, so I might actually go cut that after the show. Um, but this week is a very special week. Yeah. Why is it a special week? Because every day is a, every week should be a special week, and I've decided that this week is a special week. This week has um is the week where Dream Visual has will is starting to grow quite a lot significantly. We are rebuilding it back up, um, because while doing my masters and um, running Demon Media, I haven't had much time for dream visual which is my business but finally i have time to refocus on that um i'm currently looking at getting a new domain for this website um and buying some new equipment but um i was meant we were meant to go to a rally today to film it um in Birmingham but we decided I decided not to um it was a Mick Lynch rally um which would have been interesting to go to but uh, and I wanted to go get some like footage there because I thought that'd be interesting for my YouTube channel because getting the thoughts and opinions of why people are at this rally um I I do need to ask Jim the CEO of Hoyt because I think he's gone down there to see what he is thinking what it is like on the ground but yeah there's enough there is an enough is enough rally today in digbeth birmingham so if you're there please let us know your thoughts about that yeah definitely definitely do that so tom yeah we don't talk about mead or cheese enough on this show well yes so i want to ask you where would you consider to be the mead capital of the world? Uh, probably your f- apartment. My apartment? Yeah, your apartment. Not like Cornwall? Uh, I'd say Devon. Devon? Maybe. Or, like, whole world, are we talking? The whole world. I think somewhere like Sweden, probably. Somewhere like Sweden? Yeah, because of the Vikings and that. Just um, a quick question. Are you getting, like, the small fuzz sound in the headphones? Yeah, it might be this. One sec. 
but I can't hear anything out of my headphones. I I can. I can hear things. I might stop recording. Is this laptop just playing up? Just see if it's gone now. It is still there. Is it gone now? It is still there. Is it gone now? It's completely gone now, yeah. Yeah, there's a fan on that. Ah, okay. I need to check my laptop because it shouldn't be fanning that much. Yeah, well, you could pick it up on the microphones is the only problem. Yeah. I'll have that off for now. I um, wonder what's causing that. Usually it's fans like very quiet. I'll have to look at that tonight. Yeah, probably. So, no, I think there are a few contenders for Mead Capital of the World. Yeah. One of them would be Leicester, the home of Mead and Cheese. Okay, yeah. And then, I think Cornwall, as Cornwall has produced a lot of great Cornish meads. It has, yeah. Such as the Heligan Garden Mead and the Cornish Mead Co's traditional mead. And when you went to Cornwall, was there not Cornwall in almost every pub? What's that? <laughs> when you went to Cornwall, was there not mead in almost every pub <sighs> and bar? No. No? No. But what about my next contender, Devon? I haven't been to Devon. You've not been to Devon? I I don't want to like try and say there was loads of mead in each pub because there wasn't in Cornwall. Uh, there was uh, uh, more shops with mead in them, but there wasn't mead. There, in Devon, there was one pub, what Maddie went to, which did sell mead, and that was a meadery restaurant. I think Cornwall and Devon need to up their game. They need to work harder to put pub get their pubs and demand that they sell mead because it's. It is a um, problem. It is a problem, yeah. I will agree with that because, you know, Cornwall does have a lot more mead than Leicester. There's mm-hmm. a lot more bars selling mead than in Leicester. Yep. But every bar should be selling mead. Every, yeah. I've Again, I've not been... I don't go around loads of bars when I was in Cornwall. I went around a cider farm, which didn't sell mead. I wouldn't expect a side farm to sell mead because it's a side farm. But yeah. I also went round a our local hotel bar didn't sell mead. Um, but there were shops that sold mead. So it, it, it's just a bit disappointing, you know. You go to one of the mead capitals, you expect them to sell mead in everywhere you expect it to be in most places like not like people looking at you confused which is a shame but um we are taking actions against that uh listeners of the show um we are yeah yeah so the mead and cheese sovereign and grand committee yeah so the mead and cheese sovereign grand committee and the dema media society has linked together it in cause and mission i have full confidence that if all do their duty to continue to promote mead as the utmost and finest product across the nation to ensure that mead has a home in every household to build a new media superpower new cinemas and radio stations and new meadries if all day do their duty to achieve this we could do this by the end of the decade and at any rate it is the resolve of our community our team our committee and our peoples to get this job done yes absolutely so again let's say there are five contenders for mead capital yeah okay we said leicester cornwall and devon i would like to say Stockholm. Stockholm. Yeah. I don't know anything about it, but I know in Sweden they have a lot of, you know, mead came Vikings. I would like to shout out York. York. We know Nidhogger mead is from York. Yep. And we know that York also has a mead festival. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, that's a good contender. York, York, York. Yeah. They also have mead at their Viking festivals as well, which yeah. are quite common in York. Maybe um, it's more common in festivals than then bars and things. Maybe. Maybe it's more popular on random radio shows than it is in bars and yeah. things. Yeah. It seems like that. York, maybe... Um, but I don't know if... Um, Poland is quite big on mead. Yeah, Poland's very good on Moid Pidna. Yeah. Am Moid I, Pidna. Am I remembering this correctly or not? But wasn't Galaxy Radio thinking of doing a mead and cheese sort of theme show? Oh, did, was that mentioned or I think I think they want to do something to do with mead, yeah. Yeah, like I swear. I can't remember like I was a bit I'm a bit tired today. I've I've you know, just feeling feeling the winter coming in, uh, as you might as that's the weather. Um but I swear Galaxy Radio might have been saying that they wanted to actually have us go on for a special episode of Mead and Cheese there. Do you think? Do you think they want us to do a special mead and cheese? Yeah. Shall I message them now? Yeah. Do you... See what they say. <laughs> what? What? Where, where should I message them from? Demon FM or mead and cheese? I think message them as Demon FM. Because after all, we basically are Demon if FM at this you point. Want mead and cheese could do a special episode on galaxy radio this year signed your loving friend lord thomas jackson I've lost a mouse. It's up there. <laughs> I hate, I it's, hate. It's Every monitor is set wall. differently. Some you have to go up to go out and some you have to go up. Um, if you want, Mead and Cheese could do a special, spell episode wrong, episode on Galaxy Radio this year. This year. Let us, let us know what you think. All the best. Lord. Lord Thomas. Um, how do you feel about the word sovereign? Sovereign. Because I like the I like saying the word sovereigns of meat and cheese. Hmm. Sovereign. Sovereign. I think that sovereign is a great word. Yes. Because, uh, like, I'm thinking, like, obviously we... I think everyone who comes on the show should be a lord, but I think every lord needs its sovereign. I don't, I don't know about sovereign, because we're not ruling over anyone. Are, are we not? No. No? <laughs> Well, we are ruling over the demon media. I, I would, I would qualify mead and cheese as the sovereign of the whole society, like the constitutional sovereign. Well, yeah, obviously. I, I would say, like, say if there's another station manager, um, I, I, I actually no, even better. Right, so Mead and Cheese, so say if Galaxy Radio or Galaxy Media elect like a head of TV, for example. Yeah. They have to come and come to this place here where the Mead and Cheese sovereign will sit and they'll say, they'll say, my majesty, the sovereign of Mead and Cheese, uh, the, the, stu the students of the student media group in Leicester have voted for me to be station manager of TV. I would now like to form a, a, a team under me for TV. Do I have your con your royal consent to do that? And, I'll, and we'll say, of course you have the constitutional consent and we'll like sign a piece of paper and give them uh, sovereign 
descent on their mission. Of course we will do that. That is actually a great idea. Of course, and we will also set up the Demon Media House of Lords. Yes. Yeah. Something that we've said we want to do for a while, I believe. But let's go away from Mead now, and let's talk about what could be the cheese capital of the world. Amsterdam, without a shadow of a doubt. Amsterdam? Yep. Not... Leicester, the home of mead and cheese. No, Amsterdam. Where the mead and cheese audience voted Red Leicester as the best cheese ever. Yeah, so we overturned it in our own country. If you want to say in our country, yeah, uh, Leicester is ahead of the capital of cheese because this is where we overturned a corrupt survey. Um, But in terms of um, what is best, the best place for um, cheese is Amsterdam, without a doubt. And why do you think it's Amsterdam? Because you can go into... There's there's a street where there's like 10 cheese shops and you can just go in and just pick out as many samples as you want. You There is a... Un, Amsterdam have a unlimited supply of free cheese samples. Okay. And would you like to tell us what you did with these samples? I I believe you've told this story on Mead and Cheese before. What I did with these samples? Well, again, like, before I was uh, (coughs) proclaimed sovereign of Mead and Cheese, um, I was just a normal peasant with a few coins in my pocket. And Amsterdam... Meal, food in Amsterdam's a bit more expensive than the food in the United Kingdom of Northern Ireland and Great Britain. Um, so I didn't want to buy as many food out, and particularly just for lunch. Like if I'm going out for a meal, I want to go in the evening. I don't want to particularly spend loads of money in a day, and shop's quite expensive. But Cheese Street, as I call it, was free, and I would just eat cheese in every shop and that would um you know that would be lunch for the day nice and there was like mustards in there there was like little crackers all that good stuff and moving away from mead and cheese where would you say is the sundial capital of the world uh well I feel like the Sundial capital of the world would have to go to Kirby Muxley. Where? Kirby Muxley. Where's that? Uh, it's it's a village next to Leicester Forest East, where my grandparents live, and they have a Sundial in their garden, a little one. <laughs> and I always that was the first time I ever saw a Sundial, and that Sundial has been there for years. I think since my dad was a kid. And it's accurately tells the time. It's how I learnt how to. I learnt Roman numerals off that. I learnt how a sundial works. Um, I learnt how a sundial works off that. And as it is in Kirby Muxley, I don't think that sundial will ever be removed. It's part of the furniture, and I just think it's simple, small, and impressive. Would you say it'd be wrong if the council removed? That's unreal. Well, the thing is, the council couldn't remove it because it's private property. Have you ever seen a sundial bigger than a door? I can't say I have. No. Personally. Well, you are in luck, my friend, because if you go to the small market town of Sutton in Ashfield in Nottinghamshire, you can see... The largest sundial in Europe. But try and see it too. But like many things, like Nathan for you leaving Amazon Prime, the sundial is leaving Sutton. So you've got about two weeks to go see it. It won't ever leave. I don't believe they'll ever remove it's it. It's leaving. It's going. It's gone. It's not gone. It's for sale. If you would like to buy this big sundial from Sutton, please contact the Ashbit District Council to inquire about buying it. Maybe 
people should inquire about hoist lemonade wax melts. Hoist lemonade wax melts. Um, we I do need to do another batch of wax melts soon. With all my newfound time, I might do that. I might start making wax melts again. And how is the wax melt business going? Uh, I'm currently not doing it. But when I was doing it, 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 it you can sell like... Think about wax melts. Is think about that. The wax melt is a bit bigger than your thumb, right? Right. And a candle is a lot bigger than your thumb. Yeah. Now, wax melts, you can sell more for less. No, more for more. So you can sell less for more. That's the one. You can sell less wax melts for more money than a candle. And that's why I like wax melts. Yeah. Because they're like... Because, do you know, have you ever used wax melts? No. They're slightly stronger, different type of wax. And you get them in, like, cool shapes. And you just put them on, you know, you put them on, like, a um, a wax burner and it burns it. And it just adds a nice fragrance. And um, with hoist wax melts, we always wanted that fragrance to be hope. And what does hope smell like? It smells like lemons. Does it not smell like pumpkin spice? Oh yeah, that's that's a Halloween hope. Like if you, again, like we're see we're a seasonal company. We do loads of different fragrances. Hope is something different for everyone else. And hope is a big word. Like there's subdominions of hope, like courage, motivation, opportunity, opportunity, freedom, freedom, education, imperialism. Empire, Colo- Colo- colony, <laughs> colonialism, which brings me back to my new favourite word, sovereign. Yeah. The sovereign candle will be coming out in 2023. And I believe, um, you know, our guest who's coming on was a major sovereign in the British Empire in the 1580s, was he not? Yes, yes. Uh, Ryan was formerly... Um, <laughs> King Henry the <laughs> Eighth. Yeah. Um, but after, as you said, getting trapped in that bit of ice, he's now here with us today. It was a shame, wasn't it? We've had a few sovereigns, haven't we? A few monarchs on our show. We have King Hugo of France. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we've had Prince Evan of Greece. We have had Prince Evan of Greece. We've had the Princess. Of Wales, Madeleine yeah. Forster. We've had, um, we've had obviously us. Um, yeah, there's a load of royal people on this show. It's been quite an honour. We've had the Transformers guy as well. Yeah, should we play Living in a Box by Living in a Box? No. Why? I've just decided no. No? No. But did you know that it is my future father-in-law's favourite song? No. Well, it is. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not. It's favourite song of year 3000. <laughs> like, everyone... <laughs> but this is the 80s special. Could, right, I was thinking, if this was a movie... Oh, yeah, play, yeah, play that song, by the way. That was only a joke. If this was a movie, could we, like... What would you do if you're stuck in a radio station forever? A radio station forever? Yeah. And you could only play the one same song, Year 3000, and you was with one, the one same guest, and you mm. had to talk about mead and cheese forever. Mead and cheese forever. 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 Is that heaven or is it hell? It's It's somewhat... Um, somewhat heavenly, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it's you, your co-host, and the Transformers guy forever. You know what we'll do? We'll play a song, I know it's not 80s, but we'll play a song from the 1800s. Yeah. Um, we'll play Fur Elise, The Clutch Mix, apparently, by Beethoven. This came out in 1810. Da 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 da
da da da da da da da da da da da da This is your student sound. That ruined my Demon moment. FM. That ruined my moment. Thank you, Demon FM. You ruined my moment. Demon FM is ruining... What is this? This isn't Beethoven. This isn't Beethoven. Let's get him back on. Da 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 Are you living in a box? I am here. We are here. Are you in a box? I am not are you in, living a box? in a cardboard I'm box. I'm not living in a cardboard box. Um, we had a lot of cardboard boxes to put wires in when we were in the storage cupboard <laughs> earlier. <laughs> well, do like, you want to know how many coaxial cables we have? How many? Over a hundred and thirty. That's too many. Of uh, one kind of cable. That's too many. Yeah, I know. Too many. Um, we had one coaxial to VHS player cable, is what it was labelled. Um, where the VHS player is, we don't know. Probably got thrown out. Yeah, probably got thrown out in the But 1990s. yeah, we, we have Ryan in the studio with us. He is adding some songs, songs that he wants us to play. And... Uh, and from what you know of Ryan, would you say he is an 80s expert? I would say he is the 80s expert. Yeah, I feel like his knowledge of the 80s is far superior than anyone. It is almost like he has lived there for an eternity. Really? So, Ryan, yeah. do you want to jump on mic while, yeah, you, while you're doing this? So, I don't Ryan, 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 <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. So just we'll do a little introduction. So yeah, Ryan, introduce yourself. Well, I don't think there's any need to introduce myself because I've been here for quite a while, you know. So um, I've been. Well, doing introduce yourself to the mead and cheese. The mead and probably. cheese, the mead and cheese listeners. Uh, well, I'm Ryan, um, your local '80s DJ. Uh, my show has been on a hiatus for a number of weeks because of, well, holidays, birthdays, and preparing for my third yeah. year at uni yeah so yeah. but how is that all going you know going into your third year you excited uh yeah i am actually so Ooh. no nervous as well because obviously it's going to be quite difficult but and there I'm we are a, i'm assuming you're continuing yeah. uh 80s show show now. yeah yeah ryan's records of the 80s yeah yes, so ryan's hopefully you guys have not forgotten about that no <laughs> so by this we, point, we so will you never forget yeah, about sorry. your 80s show uh, ryan and no. and yeah Ever. so you so you're like a very much an expert on the 80s aren't you like you would you to say a, well to a point you're picking you me up now yeah, you're well, making it making me seem like Ryan, i'm an encyclopedia do you feel ready to do one of our quizzes i can do yeah i have 10 events from the 80s oh what like political events or just events events 10 random events yep from the 80s each corresponding to a different year in the 80s. Oh, God, if they're sports, I'm going to do terrible. They are r- arranged randomly, but each year only has one event. Uh, so, yeah. you know, that's, not, that's, that's pretty reasonable for someone yeah. that's not been yeah, like, yeah. revising for this at all. So, so apologise in advance. Yeah. Do you, how how do you think you'll well. do in this? Like, I think if I get at least half of them yeah. right, then I've, uh, I'm, I'll be somewhat yeah. satisfied. But how versed are you with the sort of events of the 80s like would you say it depends thing is depends though because obviously i think i think reasonably but because yeah. dep- obviously back in the day not everyone really cared about what was going on it's just like you lived your life if you yeah. if you cared you cared yeah didn't, some people didn't. couldn't even read back in the day really oh, I, I, <laughs> yeah. literacy what are you rates, talking about literacy Liter- rates were really yeah. low back yeah. then back then yeah are you serious yeah, yeah really low i don't think so really low was quite hard yeah. to get into are you sure we're talking was? about the 1880s or the 1980s yeah. 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 the 80s yeah the 80s. yeah the 80s <laughs> 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 let's begin <laughs> your quiz yeah let's begin so. the quiz okay so oh. the first event i want you to um you know try and guess what the year for this event is the first American commercial bank, the Bank of North America, opens. Oh, God. Um, do I just get one guess and then get, like, three you guesses? You get one, one guess, yeah. <laughs> That's fair enough. Uh, 
I don't actually know that. The beauty of it is, though, because it goes from 80 to 89. That's only 10 years. Yeah. That's only Can't 10 years. So, so, you know, if one of the years isn't for a particular event, you know, it will come up later. Yeah. Mm. So what, North American Bank opened? Yeah. The Bank of North America, which is the first ever bank in America. I'm going to go 82. It was 82. Was it? It was. Oh, my God. So You're going to be the 80 next <laughs> Yes. That's instinct right there. Right. right there. Your next event. Oh, yeah. In Vietnam, Emperor Quang Trung crushes the Chinese Qing forces in Ngoc Hoi Dong Da. It is considered one of the greatest victories in Vietnamese military history. Oh god, now you're making me uh, use my history A level now. Even though I didn't really do Vietnam War stuff. <laughs> Would have loved to though. Um, so when what? When he came to power? Or? So, so the Emperor of Vietnam, Quang Trung, Right. Crushed the Chinese Qing forces in Ngoc Hui Dong oh, Da. Yeah, and a keyword here, Do Doing. The thing is, the Cold War Pan. ended in 1990, 91. So, God, yeah, it would have been. Um, I'm going to go. This is another. This isn't a guess right here because military history is on that period is kind of iffy. Uh, 1987. It wasn't 87. It it's was early, wasn't it? 89. Oh, okay. I thought it was earlier. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I was, I was two years off. So. so, your next event, the settlement of Ostersund is established in Sweden. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You're what? taking really obscure stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we, we, we think it's like, what's this band in there? You know? So, world history. So, yeah, the oh, settlement God. of Ostersund is established in Sweden. Sweden. Hmm. 1986? Am I wrong? It, Probably wrong. Well, it was 86. Was it? Yes. Yeah, well, but oh God. Give you, we'll, but yeah, we'll give you. We'll give was you. It, was it like yeah. partly crossing a, crossing a, the years? Yeah, you like, can no, well, Late eighty five <laughs> to early eighty six. <laughs> no, not not late eighty five. It was definitely eighty six. But, uh, but whether it was the right eighty six, we we don't know. Oh, right. you guys have prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing great. Um, so. Okay, Mozart's Great Mass is first performed in Salzburg, Austria. God, you love your history, don't you? Um, so Salzburg Mass was first what? So this was the first ever performance of Mozart's Great Mass. God. Uh, 1984. Wrong. Oh, it wasn't 84 for the <laughs> first ever performance of Mozart's Great Mass. It was 83. Oh, that's close, man. Ryan. So I've got two right and two wrong. So I'm on equal ground. Yes. Yeah. Well, I want to keep that keep that at least uh, going there. So. All right. I think we're on our fifth question now. We're halfway yeah. through. There's halfway no, there's, through. Is there an intermission? There isn't an intermission. Oh, You've got to keep it. going. We had those in cinemas so what, back in the day. What years have <laughs> so. you guessed so far, Ryan, that haven't been right? Well, you know these the years are going to come up. Ninety. What? Oh, so it's. Oh, well, okay. I see what you're doing here. So, nineteen eighty four, and then nineteen eighty seven. Oh, so you're just. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Eighty four and eighty seven will come up later in this quiz. Okay. Yes. I should. So, I need to get a pen and paper. Your next Sorry. question: The British Gazette and the Sunday Monitor, the first. Sunday newspaper ever in Britain begins publication. Oh, this is closer to home now. Um, 1980. I feel like I should go for one of the years that I've already done. Um, it sounds early 80s to me. Newspaper. First publication, you say, right? Yeah. The first ever Sunday newspaper in Britain begins publication. Oh, was it 1980? Oh, God. 1988? I'm wrong. It's early 80s, isn't it? Hang on, let it me write these years down. It was 80. Ah. 
yeah yeah that was my instinct going there so those are the, i'm was. just writing the ones i got yeah. there wrong it was it was 80 so <laughs> the the next question carl wilhelm scheel discovers tungsten oh my god tungsten <laughs> is discovered in see, this year see back in the day we a lot of us didn't really re- unless you were like a big <laughs> history person <laughs> You didn't really bother about this, but I guess you would have been a history well, history guy. You know, if if you know a lot about the eighties, sure. you should know. Because I know about, about like the events. pop culture yeah. and the music and the fashion and you know <laughs> movies, blah blah. I this think this is... was very relevant for the time. Tungsten, the, yeah. The discovery of tungsten. it was all over the newspaper though. Yeah. So well, the first ever Sunday newspaper, yeah, yeah it would yeah. have been. Um, nineteen eighty. I'm looking at the years. Hang on, so the ones I get wrong, like, and I get the wrong years, do those still count towards other questions? No, so with the last question, I told you it was 80, so that can't yeah. come up so again. So it can't come so up it's again. the ones that you've guessed that weren't right. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. They, they, they will could come likely up again. come up again. Okay. So 1980 could come up again. So, so you know... As you've written down, I can see... 84, 87. 87 and 84 do come up in the quiz. Okay, I'm going to go 84, go. You're going 84? Yeah, do it. It was 81 where oh, Tungsten was God. discovered. So, so close, but so far away. Yeah. Thanks, Tom, for the encouragement there. So, <laughs> you're doing well. You, you are doing well, yeah. Historically, I'm surprised they've got so a couple right. So, you, you've only got, so. what, four more questions to go? Mm-hmm. So let's let's go for it. 85 hasn't come up yet. That's good. Connecticut ratifies the United States Constitution and becomes the fifth U.S. state. <laughs> 1988. It, well, I'll give you that. It is 88. Yeah. What? Hang on. I feel like I'm getting these partly wrong. You said, I'll give you that. <laughs> so, well, yeah, 88 is 88, you know. Uh, you know, Did it happen in 87 or something, or 89? No, no, it definitely happened in 88. Definitely. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're not, just not sure of the historical accuracy of these? Is that I'm, I'm sure of the historical accuracy. I'm just not sure about your answer. <laughs> Continue, <laughs> Corey. Continue. Go. Yes, yeah. okay. Give Thanks, that Corey. So the next, point. This yeah. guy's got plenty of faith in me. The everyone. next question. So. New Jersey becomes the third US state. Oh, uh, 1985. Wrong. It was 87. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. Come up again. Yeah. So, I'm just trying to guess the other years for the ones I've just got written down here. So, well, there we are. Yeah. So, <laughs> where are we at? So. Because there were only two US states before 87. Yeah. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> so, so, it's not Corey, a lie. There, you mean there were still the Republicans and the Democrats? I think. Um, Are you what before eighty seven? For eighty seven, but, yeah. but we just said in our quiz that in eighty seven, New Jersey. Hang on a minute, where are you getting this information, yes, Corey? Eight. So is Corey writing it, writing these facts yeah. down, Tom? Uh, I've What's the reliability? Checked. I've double checked yeah, these. They these are, are correct, historically yeah. accurate. Yes, mm. indeed. Um, would you like to proceed? Yep, you have two, two yeah. more questions. Oh, joy. So the penultimate question, the first ever issue of the Daily Universal Register, which would later be known as The Times, is published in London. Oh, oh God, I do know this, I think. 1980... The Times, The Times, The Times, The Times. Late 80s, 89? Oh, oh, I guess that. We we had 89. Oh, can I get another guess? The, yeah, <laughs> so I'll give you another guess. Okay, give me another guess. Okay, 1985. I'll give you that. Yeah, okay. I'll give it you. Uh, it was mid to late 80s, wasn't it? Early it, 80s. It was, it was times, definitely 85. Whether was, it was 1985, I don't know. I'm getting confused by this, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was 85. Sorry. So the last question. The Bank of New York opens as the first ever bank in New York State. So Hang before on, wasn't this, this way before that decade before ever this, came along? What? Before this year, there were no banks in New York. 
okay, now something's <laughs> something's fishy here. You're not get you're not giving you're you're speaking about the eighties as in just any year in the eighties, not the nineteen eighties. Oh my god. Do you Cory, I've exposed you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You That's it. finally <laughs> caught on to what this is about. This is about the 1880s. It's not the 1880s. It's the it 1780s. Is the 1780s. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> you really have screwed... You screwed me over. <laughs> so, so well, you're doing well. So, like, yeah. No wonder how these, these things didn't make sense, like the sun and stuff like that. I was like, wait, this has come like centuries before. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, oh Mozart, Mozart's first performance definitely wasn't No wonder why this is all historical. <laughs> this is... <laughs> yeah, God. Jersey wasn't... This I'll tell you now, this is a very unique show, guys. You definitely tune in. So they do this a lot. So... <laughs> So it's a, so it's your a prominent last, feature. Your, yeah, so your last question, uh, the Bank of New York, what year did you think that opened? <clears throat> so I believe this opened in 1784. It did! <laughs> so, oh, wow, Ryan, you have passed the first round. Thank you that very much. That, yeah, I'll give now, you a pass. You, could, you were, you know, tricked a little bit. Could, yeah. could I uh, please choose the next record? Is that all right? Oh, yeah. We, we've got our record deck set up. Yeah. Oh, well, no, I just call them records because that's what we called them back in the day. Yeah. Just, uh, you just call them... Well, you, DJs, uh, you call them records. D- no, we've got our LPs ready. You got your LPs. Yeah. He promises. That's true, you know. I can see it right here. Yeah. So... But because um, I can't seem to choose a song we, we from, only my, from play, my angle, we only play vinyl, cassette, or eight track on the eight <laughs> special. Track. Yeah, um, don't forget CDs as though, because CDs came along in the eighties. Oh, no, we don't. We don't want CDs. Oh come on, CDs. I love CDs. No, we're we're more interested in what what they called Tom. Like when you get songs off of like an NES cartridge. That's what we want. Yeah. Yeah. Which you could, I think you could program them off in any extra cartridge, yeah, on yeah. a computer. Mm. So, but may I choose the record? You can, yeah. So, choose you're going to have to, you're going to have to do this for me because I can't do it for Yeah, us. well, I'll have to get it off the shelf and put it on yeah. the, yeah. on the spinner. So, yeah, he's done. Just like table. we did back in the D- D- DJs did. So yeah, that's just well. normal. So, well, we've got to do every week. And you had like stacks show. in the uh, radio studio, like A to Z categories yeah. and you had to pick them off or well, you brought your own you know radio studios in the 1780s i think they like just had a guy standing with a trumpet well those didn't exist <laughs> so <laughs> no so. they did it was just a guy with a really big trumpet so the whole city could hear mm. yeah, and, yeah and in the 1780s it's just a guy with a bow so. mm. yeah hey 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 he hey, hey. didn't choose his mm. life <laughs> so. from the town hall it's your, it's your ancestors going back just yeah. to that period of time yeah yeah so What's the record you want the me record. to grab off the shelf, Ryan? The, the uh, record is Straight Up by Paula Abdul, because you straight up need to tell me what the hell's going on with these quizzes. Straight so, up. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can find it on the shelf. So um, he's easy, he's easy. Oh yeah, yeah. We've got the forty-five of it here. We'll play. We'll play the single right now. I think. Mm. Just, yeah. just put the needle down. I brought this. Is the needle doing okay? Yeah, it's playing. That's good. Welcome back to Mead and mm-hmm. Cheese, the eighty special, where we're joined by Ryan, who yep. has just done a quiz on the seventeen eighties. Yeah, completely um, unexpected. <laughs> and also, by the way, guys, that record was straight up. By Paula Abdul. It was. I'd say that. It I'd was straight up by Paula Abdul. I highly now, recommend that album. Now though. the record needle has been picked straight up because mm. we are no longer playing the track. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he did. Yeah. Yeah. So, proper OGGJs. I'm like Gary Davis. So, go anyway. On. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can pick a song off of yeah. uh, our eight track library next. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, eight track I've library. I've got some yeah. Um, tape. Yeah, we've got some cassettes as yeah. well on the shelf behind us. Yeah. Yeah, just picture it. Yeah, um, see it right there. Yeah, we don't have any CDs because the CD collection was lost by the previous station manager. Yeah. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Um, I think I think Maddie lost them. I don't know. Did she yeah. really? She lost. How many CDs are we talking here? Uh, we're talking at least twelve. Oh my god, that's huge. Yeah. So it was all shelves load that. It's so, all like re-releases of uh, Beatles albums and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. one JLS what, like greatest album. hits. Like sort of things. Now fifty JLS, One Direction, oh, Cheeky yeah. Girls, Nivercox. Yeah, mm. Nivercox. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they have a song about the eighties. Yeah. Mm. We'll probably play that because I don't. Have you heard of Nivercox? No. Oh, ring a bell. I don't Eight have it installed on the system. Eighties band, isn't it? 
Mm. Well, they were Retro. formed in do, do, 2018. Wait, hang on. I've got a question for you guys. Do you guys actually like like classical music, like proper like pianist music? Well, we like you know, Beethoven. We, blah, we do blah, have a know. pianist sat behind us, um, mm. along with the you know record shelf, but um, On radio. yeah. No, I don't know. We don't listen to a lot of classical music, mm. not on this show, maybe so, in our own. Corey, Corey, I'm going to ask you quickly. Like, what is your actual favourite like genre and era of music? Or genres and eras, whatever. Genre and era of music. Um, I would say I'm quite a big rock guy. Mm-hmm. Soft rock? Hard rock? Uh, um, you know, pop rock. Cool. Nice. Um, and I would say that my favourite decade for music is probably the 1960s. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So I respect other decades because I love the 90s as well. Like people might not know that I love the 90s pretty much almost as much as the 80s. I kind of switch between. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, people see, oh, Ryan, you just like 80s. Like, nope, 90s are great too. Well, the greatest band of all time, the Monkees, formed in the 60s. They did. Yeah. yeah. And so they were a 100% them. real band formed very organically. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> Yeah, and they actually crossed decades to carry it on into, um, well, the 1980s they as did. well. They had an album in the late 80s. I forgot, yeah, I think it was 87. Um, they had an album. Don't ask me the name of it because I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of theirs, but I do know they had one, I think, at that period of time. Do you ever watch the Monkeys TV show? No. No, it's great. It's, it's a so great watch. <laughs> there's a TV show? It really it really Corey's is not making amazing. this up on the spot, guys. So, there's a Monkeys TV show. There is a Monkeys TV show. I'm not joking. I so, was joking when I said they formed organically, though. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. Tom, do you know the story behind the Monkeys? No. So, basically, they were put together by a TV station uh, because they wanted to create a reality show about a band to replicate Beatlemania, the yeah. success of the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. A lot of um, 60s bands in the late 60s tried to replicate that, to be fair. So, um, it was yeah. the boy band at the time, like I was saying about boy bands and stuff earlier. It they, was, they were basically the first boy band, the Monkeys. I guess. What, the Monkeys or the Beatles? The Monkeys. Mm. Like, I, I wouldn't consider the Beatles a boy band. They're more you know? like young adults. They actually played their own instruments, unlike <laughs> the Monkeys when they first started. Mm. Who had to mime playing the instruments? That's just giving me an idea for a, a record to play later on, actually. So, but is yeah. it the Monkeys? No, <laughs> so it's <so laughs> just an eighties boy band, which may or may not have on here. Beethoven. But any, <laughs> anyway, Tom. <laughs> so, do you have an eighties quiz for kind, us? Kind of. I got a cheese quiz, a historical cheese, cheese quiz. A historical we're, cheese quiz. We're going to jump ahead a century now, Ryan. Okay. Jump ahead a century. In oh my god, are we going to like the, tw- the, the 20 1800s now? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like ahead from like now, like the no, 21. We did the <laughs> 1780s <laughs> quiz, now we're in the 1800s. So, okay, so right. are you ready? To do terribly, yes. This is all cheese based. Cheese. <laughs> so, I'm such an expert. Yeah, well, cheese is half the show, isn't it? That makes sense. Why did I not expect this? So, on eight in 1815. Um, the Swiss opened the first cheese factory in the world. That's number one. Right. Number two, the Liberal Prime Minister. Wait, you hang on, wait. I, I, I'm supposed to be getting these like... Oh, wait. I forgot to one explain time. the show. <laughs> doing two truths right. and a lie. So two of these things are true. One's a lie. Oh, Your job is to indicate which one's a lie. Yeah. And which one's true. Cool, so cool. I'll start again. So number one, the Swiss opened the first cheese factory in the world in 1815. Number two, the Liberal Prime Minister, Robert Gascoigne Cecil, the third Manquest of Salisbury, reduced import taxation on cheese from France in 1886 at the qu- at request from King Edward the Fourth, I think Liz King- Truss would appreciate a policy <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 definitely. Well, this was because mm. King Edward was annoyed at the fact that German cheese was becoming more popular in Britain over English and the popular French cheese, and he disliked the German Kaiser. So he asked the Prime Minister to reduce import taxation on cheese from France in 1886. That seems very specific, doesn't it? This is getting all very convoluted yeah. now. So, <laughs> so, well, if you like specific, you're going to love the next one. 
by 1880, there were 3,923 dairy factories nationwide, which reported to have made two, 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 200, 260 million pounds of cheese that year, valued at 17 million. This was represented almost 90% of cheese production that year. Question about the third one. Yep. Right. When you say there were that many factories nationwide, do you mean just England or What's do you mean this, yeah. the entire Ireland. United Kingdom? I think it's the entire United Ireland. Kingdom, yeah. All right, here's what I'm going to say. First and third one true, the second one's a lie. Okay. That's my guess. What do you think, Corey? The second one is very specific. It has so much detail. Yeah. And I wonder whether you've done that to try and throw us off. Well, oh, that is for you guys to true. decide. At the same time... It's a trick question, guys. So, how many dairy factories was it in the third one? Uh, the third one it is... Uh, let me just get the number up. 3,923 dairy factories nationwide. You see... I don't, I don't know about that, because uh, I feel like most of the factories back then would have been focused on, like, linen. Mm. I mean, I've made my guesses. You need to. Are you guessing too? I'm guessing oh. the third one. You're is guessing the, the third lie. one. Well, unfortunately, Corey, you are not the 80s expert. <sighs> that title goes to Ryan, who guessed the second one was a lie. Mm. The Liberal Prime Minister, Robert um, Cecil, um, didn't reduce import taxation for King Edward. That was total fabrication, but. That so now my history A level is actually coming into effect a tense a bit now because that's more along the lines yeah. of the history I was learning. He was the prime minister sort of. though for that period. Did he not like the German Kaiser? Is that true? I made that up, but I probably assume during the period the English wouldn't have got on with the Germans. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the 1800s they didn't. Very yeah. Well. <laughs> um, yeah. So the first factory for cheese did open in Switzerland in 1815 obviously that's not the 80s but I thought that was interesting so I kept it in and yeah they, they did I just thought that's quite a big figure in it 1880 that we were um, looking at over 3,000 nearly 4,000 dairy factories producing cheese yeah. there's a lot of cheese there there's yeah. a lot so, of cheese yeah. so. it's quite hard to find facts in the 1880s about cheese it's very it's a very specific stuff. yeah it, so, it doesn't, google doesn't come up with much see that goes to show everyone that the internet does not have an answer for everything yes. or a question for everything which wasn't so, around in the 1880s oh god no back in the day so back in the day yeah back 200 years ago in my time so <laughs> i have an 80s quiz for you just off the top of my now, head. Now, can I please clarify, because I feel like I am obligated to do so now. What century? <laughs> the 1900s. Ah, oh, thank God. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so... Maybe. It's going to be about cheese, though, isn't it? So, in 1989, right. which MCU actor was born? Oh. Oh, that's okay, that's interesting. I'll give you a clue. She was a major villain in one of the recent films. Was it... I want to say, was it Kate Blanchett, who was Hela in Thor Ragnarok? But I guess that's kind of not recent, is it? It wasn't... It's in the films, not TV shows. It wasn't shows. Kate Blanchett. It was Elizabeth Olsen... Uh, who plays yeah. the Scarlet Witch? Mm. Okay, yeah, Kate Blanchett does seem a little Doctor bit Strange older than that. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, again, this is the 1989 quiz. This one. Oh, okay, I love that. Yeah, it's a great year, guys. Great year. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's 18. C- the last year of the greatest decade. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So some would say. So, which animated show? Featuring yellow cartoon characters debuted its first episode. Yellow. Yellow? Yellow, just, yellow cartoon characters? Yeah. <laughs> Keeping in the uh, cheese theme. Um, I don't know. I'm going to be honest. No. I don't it know what was that, that. 
The Simpsons. Oh did God, their yeah, first yellow. Episode in 1989. Ah, oh, they did. Was it was Christmas special, wasn't it, or a holiday special, possibly? Yeah. yeah. Damn, that was that was so obvious, guys. I apologise for that one. I did. <laughs> okay. I did actually know that. Also so. in 1989, a wall in which capital city? Berlin. Came down. Yes, it was he Berlin. Straight yeah. away. The 80s expert. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Both historically and musically. A really important historic event in world history. Yeah. It was. It was. Sorry. Which side it's of the wall would you want to be on? Which side of the, which side of the wall? Yeah. Uh, th- is, is this 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 question come with uh, a harsh response, Thomas? Like, if you choose this side, no, I'm never going to forgive you. Which side would so, you think would be more fun? More fun, I would say music wise, <laughs> metal music wise. Yeah, <laughs> even though they've listened to the same. Um, I'd say I'm thinking because obviously, when you say music, I'm thinking West Side Story, which is a musical. Not that I know many musicals, yeah. Or, um, is it musical? It am is I a wrong? musical, yeah. Am I right? Okay, um, so the West, yeah, the West, yeah, they yeah. didn't have a West Side musical. So, yeah, yeah. I, the, the communist side is usually the least fun, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But, Has oh, it got um, someone at the mate. door? So. Oh, I'll keep asking you questions, Ryan. Yeah. When, when's the next record? I love the music parts. We, we <laughs> could, yeah, we could go to more music in a minute, but I will ask you more questions about 1989. Mm. Okay. That is all right. Which Wallace and Gromit short film... Ooh. Debut oh, in 1989. It was the oh, oh, I forgot the name of it, but it was the one where they were on the moon. It was the one where they were on the moon. I'll give again? you that. It is a grand day out. Yeah, because I know the wrong trousers came off after that one. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, and then was there a third one? There's was been it? many. Yeah, because then obviously I know um the Curse of the Were Rabbit was later. That was more like late 90s, early I, I 2000s. Think, I think the order goes um. What is it? It'd be Grand Day Out, Wrong Trousers, Close Shave. Ah, yes. That one. I know that one. I watched it. And then so you get Wear Rabbit, John. which is the first feature length. Mm. And then you go back to the short films with A Matter of Loaf and Death. And that was 2008? Yeah, I, I thought it was later. I thought it was like 2011, 2012. Possibly. Mm. Who knows? Like that. Yeah. Maybe. Well. Anyway. Shall we ask more 1989 questions? I these love are, this year, man. These are all so, lyrics from yeah. my song about 1989. That's how I know all these things. You made a song oh, about 1989. I see. Yeah. Why 1989 specifically? Well, well, it's a song that was written by my band. It's called hmm. 1989, an ode to the 80s. Corey, you're in a band. I'm only really just finding out about this yeah, on my the radio. Yeah, the Nethercarts, yeah. The what? The Nethercarts. Nethercarts. Can you vouch for this? I did, uh, yeah, I mentioned it earlier, um, subliminally. Right. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I did not know you were a band, I have deep respect for that. Okay, one. let's let's do a quick fire round. Who was Prime Minister of the United Kingdom? Still Thatcher at that it point, was wasn't Thatcher. it? It was Thatcher. She came up, Thatcher. She, she left in 1991, I think, officially. Wasn't that it? is, I think that's correct, yeah, because yeah. she was succeeded by John Major, yeah. and then Tony Blair, and then Tony Gordon Blair. Brown, yeah. and then David Cameron, and then... Theresa May, and then Boris Johnson, and then Liz Trust. Just in case you didn't know, guys, yeah. uh, the past uh, about 30 years of uh, political history with Tom here. Yeah, so, so if, if you want, we could go back together now. We could go Liz Trust, Boris Johnson. Who was the leader of the Soviet Union? Mm, 1989. I know this one. I know this one. Of course you would. Um, well, it's... No, that's way too early. I'll what give you a of? clue. So, this former Soviet leader recently passed away. It's not ringing the bell. This Go year. On. Go on. Them. I'll give you another it's clue. Obvious. This recently passed away former Soviet leader is famous for doing a Pizza Hut commercial. <laughs> that does not narrow it down. <laughs> Just tell me what it is, otherwise I'm going to guess it forever. Mikhail Gorbachev. I didn't know that. So, see, I'm learning. It's even I'm learning a few new things. Oh, here. we love Gorbachev, don't we? So. On this show, yeah. You big fans of him, yeah. Oh, we love Gorbachev, so. yeah. 
because yeah. he he was the one who brought democracy to to Russia. The, that was a good the thing. The Soviet Union. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, to be honest, guys, uh, it was a it was a very good thing when he did that. I mean, it's a shame so. that his his country is now going back the other way, but yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. so to speak. So yeah, but. Yeah, can I think of any more 1989 things? Uh, what was the highest grossing film of that year? Oh, um, it wasn't Say Anything, was it? No. Highest grossing film. Back to the Future 2? It wasn't Back to the Future 2. It was Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. The Last Crusade. Mm, okay. Yeah. I generally thought it was Back to the Future 2. So, which would have been pretty high. In I, I imagine it would have been quite oh, high yeah. up there, yeah. Definitely in the top ten. I only know all these things because, again, it's the lyrics to my song. All oh, right, <laughs> That's what you're telling me about. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, hang on. Hang on. Okay, I've got a question. I've, I'm going to ask you guys a couple of questions. Okay. Then we're going to get onto a record. Just, just one more. Just one more. Which handheld games console? Game Boy. Yes. Okay, now now you may. Yes, he is a truly expert. Now, which handheld game console came out in 1889? Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe the, <laughs> it the wooden the, spoon. It was the <laughs> so, ball and paddle, wasn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. it was a bit of rolled up cloth. <laughs> so you can draw on it, guys. So, but no, okay. I've got some uh, music stuff for you. Okay. Um, no searching on the internet, by the way. Yeah. I see that. So, because we didn't have that. If you didn't know it back then, it's just like, okay, I'll pass it to you, whatever. Um, who, I'll start with something easy, because I've kind of mentioned it earlier. Who were two of the biggest competing boy bands in the late 80s? We're talking 88, 89. The Monkees. No. <laughs> Now, this is going to be fun. You guys can both share and talk about it if you wish. I think so. it was the Nixons and no. the Gorbachevs. No. <laughs> uh, boy bands. UK. Well. They're UK. They're, bo- they're uh, British. I w- I'm going to say the... I'm going to say Westlife. The Beatles. No. That was a decade later, though, so a good one for that. And 19, the late that. late 90s. That was uh, late 90s. Take Beatles. that. Beatles. The Backstreet Boys. Late 90s. And... Yeah. Oasis, mid nineties, Blur, mid nineties, <laughs> early Gorillas. No, okay. They but if 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 it helps, they both begin with B. The Beatles. No, <laughs> the Beatles. And also, you notice how the Beatles say "have the" in front of it. Oh, they don't no start the. with. You don't just call them Beatles. You call them the Beatles. Um. No looking on any devices, by the way, Tom. I see that. I've got a little is that, camera. What is that? <laughs> so, Sony. Microsoft <laughs> so and Apple. Um, no. Backstreet Boys. No. Uh, you guys are not going to get I'm it. Not big I on, mentioned it to you earlier, Tom, not, in conversation. I'm not big on boy bands from the 80s, I'll be honest with you. Okay, it was Brother Beyond, who I've met the lead singer of at yeah. a festival, and Bros. It wasn't the Baja uh, man. No. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. I got. I'll. I'll give you another one. Um, who was the? See, I'm. I'm focusing on music. Um, what was Rick the... Astley? <laughs> no. So that's too Ringo obvious. Ringo Starr. So now I'm trying to think of questions now. Uh, Jimmy Savile. Who, who who was okay? Who what eighties late eighties boy band wrote the song and performed the song "Wishing I Was Lucky," which is a record. The next record I'd like to play because I wish I was a little bit lucky in some of these quizzes. Wet, Ready, wet, wet, wet. Nice, good one. So Corey got it. Beautiful. I didn't. So okay. um, seen them live twice as well. They're very good. Um, Okay, I'll give you another one. Um, I, I've heard that meat and cheese makes some people feel wet, wet, wet. What do you is, think to that? Well, I don't know. I mean, it was me thinking this was a PG uh, radio show, but <laughs> <laughs> so clearly not. I've well, clearly this is a PG show. People, you know, they spill some meat on themselves and then they're wet, wet, wet. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So he got out of that one. So fast one, guys. Um Okay, who was the... 
okay. There's so many questions, man, I could ask. Like, the obscure, the well-known, it's like everything in between. Wet, wet, wet again. <laughs> um, what was one of the highest... Um, Shawaddy waddy. Okay, give me okay, give me a number one song on the UK top forty in nineteen eighty five. Staying alive. No. Nineteen eighty five. Bohemian Rhapsody. Nope, that was ten years before. I Radio have... Gaga. Nope. ADA Eye of the Tiger. Nope. Under pressure. No. You're going these are completely different years, man. Staying alive. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. think of bands. 1985. Mm-hmm. What Moon big Age hits came Daydream. Out? No. <laughs> so. Changes. No. You're just asking for any song that was a number Literally one. Literally any song that was a number one. So I'm giving you... I'm In not just saying specific... Tom, stop looking it up. I'm not. Yeah, I see that. I'm pressing a button. Tom wishes he was lucky. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. Any song that was number one in 85. Um, I'm Mull good. of Kintyre. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, <laughs> so any song. Um, okay, um, I, uh, pipes of peace. No. Um, good song, say man. say say. No, also good song. Eighty three. That also did go to number one, I believe. Handle with care. No. Um, this is this is. This is actually one. it's easier than you think. Smooth it is. criminal. No, that was a number one. Thriller. In the no. You just named Michael Jackson songs from various years now. <laughs> maybe, maybe. He didn't even have any hits in Beat it. Nope. Um, it's not Michael Jackson. Earth song. <laughs> nope. That it's easy. Friendly. It really is 85. that. 85. Imagine. Okay. Dare, dare they dream. did. They did a hound dog. Okay. I'll give you. I'll give you a clue. Um, one of these songs um, was from a band that did an album called Songs from the Big Chair. 85, 85. Now, I love this album. It's one of my favourite albums the of the The Ghostbusters 80s. theme song. <laughs> no. <laughs> so That was a number one, I'm sure, at some point. No. No? Well, no, it actually top ten, but I don't think it got to number one. That was 84. Um, 84, I was close. No. 85. Man, what a weird year. Real songs, Am- from, songs from the big chair. Think of the album. Think of the band. Real band. American, the theme for Hulk Hogan. No. That wasn't even in the UK top 40, man. Should so, be. so, so, be. so, so. This is what happens what because I use the charts for my show, I, so. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not that, like, versed in songs. Um, wishing I Was Lucky. No, but that was a top 10 hit in 87. Over here. Um, Making Plans for Nigel. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Getting these wrong. My God. Okay, do you want me to tell you? Just no, you no, no. We need. This to, is so obvious, man. We need, to, <laughs> we need to go until we get one, don't we, Tom? Well, I've run out of song names. I only yeah, know few. Not. You've not yes, run out. I can make up song names. Um. In dreams. No. Re-recorded <laughs> by Roy Orbison. Love. I no. drove all night. No. Drive. Drive by the cars. Your. Drive by the cars. No. No, that was 84, but that did get to number one, I think. Frankie yeah, says five. relax. No, 84 as well, but that also did <sighs> got to number one over here. In fact, it got to number one twice Blood. over here, innit? That was close. So, again, 84. 84. What? It's just a better year, isn't it? 84 was one of the best years for music. In the 80s, to be honest, you, you, I loved all the years in the 80s for music. 1980 was a bit, obviously, crossing over from the 70s, so it's kind of a bit... It's yeah. finding its decades finding its feet there. Eighty one to eighty nine obviously is properly when it obviously got going, but I think my favourite years for music in the eighties if I had if like I had to choose um are eighty seven and eighty four, even though I love all the other years, so it's kind of hard. At number one from eighty five. Yeah. Wonderful Christmas time. Paul McCartney was probably number one in that year at some point. No, it came out in eighty, I think. We, no, it wasn't. It was. It might have been. It. It wasn't number one. Wish let's it could let's be think Christmas. Because I, I, I think yeah. I, re- I remember the Christmas number one. Um, the Christmas number one for that year. Um, oh, but if you tell us, we can't guess. That. You can't get this. Is, okay, don't go for Christmas stuff because now we're getting too specific. I'm trying to generalize it to make it easier for you too. <laughs> we can do the Christmas stuff at Christmas time. So. 
What do you? But think? I think I do know the Christmas uh, number one. I recall for that name. Is there you? a Paul McCartney song in the number one spot at any point? In '85, no. No. Paul McCartney only did three al no four albums in the '80s. Five, '80, '82, '83. But that was a joint one with Michael Jackson. '86 and '89, he did five albums. He didn't do anything in '85. Because probably shame. was recording music at that time, probably, I imagine. So, But you're a big Paul McCartney fan, so... I, I am I, a big I can, McCartney fan. I loved his solo stuff more than I loved his Beatles stuff. I I love it say, all. Say, say, equally. say. Say, I pl- say, say. I played that record at work. Banger, yeah. yeah. But, um, so, yeah. Um, come on, you guys. Are you, you gonna going to get something I'm going to have to tell you? It's, um, uh, I'm telling you, when I name one of these songs, you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. So... Uh, and it was also there, a US number one, I'm thinking of this as well. Is there a Queen song? In 85? Yeah. Um, Who Wants to Live Forever? No, that was 86. There was one late 85, One Vision, which came out as a single ahead of their 86 album, but it wasn't a number one. Not a until, number one. Any not until 86. Songs? Yellow? Nope. No. no not yellow. until 86. Calling America was their next one. Yellow didn't have a lot of number ones. In the eighties, no. Obviously, they're because obviously they uh, properly kind of peaked. Just I think, in, in the late seventies, they didn't have a lot of number ones. Not really, no. But calling America was um, a top forty hit in nineteen eighty six, which was one of the last ones, I think. Eighty five. Any George Harrison? Nope. No. He came. It was eighty seven. Any <laughs> Any Ringo Starr? I love. Okay, it is from a band. Okay, they're performing live. Oh, they have performed live this year. I love this band. I rec- hey, baby. No. <laughs> no. I even got the CD for my 21st Bee birthday. Gees? Nope. They're a boy band, mid-80s. Boy band. Hey, that. Nope. <laughs> but they begin with T. I'm really narrowing it down for you now. Shawadi Wadi. Nope. I'm giving, I'm literally giving it to you on a plate, man. They begin with T. They're a boy band, mid-80s. Loads of girls love them. Um, My mum. They had it. They had four hit singles from "Songs from the Big Chair," which was their hit album in the mid '80s. They had four singles Time from warp? it. No, guys, come on! Oh my god! Any temper? No, I'm telling you. If I, when I tell you this, you're going to be like, "Oh my god!" Go on. Go on then. Tears for Fears, Everybody oh, Wants to Rule the World, yeah. number one hit over here and in the States. Oh, what about uh. Toto Africa? That was 82. What about Hold the Line? Hold the Line, that was 78. Oh. But I guess uh, we'll uh, get on to the next record now. I'm telling you now, this they, this is going to be in the reds forever. <laughs> well, we've only so. got like six minutes left of the show. But it's a three minute song. That means we'd only have two minutes left to do the 80s quizzes. All right, you can cut it three minutes through. It gives you 42 seconds. To do an 80s quiz? You still have another 80s quiz, don't you? I've got an 80s quiz. Yeah. Unless you just we could say that you could... close the show with the song. Do it, your 80s yeah, quiz. Yeah, I guess song. you can. That's, mate. That's fine. That's fine. Then. I'll try and get through this very fast. Okay. So this is an 1880s cheese quiz. Hang on, I thought you already did this. No, <laughs> this sorry, is a wrong decade. <laughs> so, 1980s cheese quiz. Yippee. So, y- y- so you should know about this. Really? Should know Just like you guys yeah. should yeah. know. You are the 1980s so. expert. Right, so... We so. never claim to be 80s experts. <laughs> really? So <laughs> that's why you're doing this special, though. So. so this is two truths, one lie. you got to indicate the lie. Um, um, in January 1980... Uh, cheese was the average price of cheese was 198 pence <laughs> per kilogram Ooh. so that's in January 1980 the average price of cheese in the UK was 198 pence per kilogram that's so cheap oh, I remember that um, so cheap man in totally. the, yeah you were there I was the, there <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, in the early 1980s, the US government j- distributed £300 million pounds of government cheese. And mm. Mm. that it, seems us. Sus. In 1983, when visiting Queen. When visiting Queen Elizabeth I, Margaret Thatcher had to 
leave the meeting early because they were sharing cheese platter um but she figured she learned that she was lactose intolerant so. okay i'm gonna go for the same thing first and third are correct second one's a lie i'm probably gonna jinx myself and it's gonna be something else i don't think you would do the same number twice okay fine right i'm gonna have a it's before you thing. before i submit this guess um i'm changing it and um i'm gonna say okay no the Oh, the second one seems implausible. We of. know that the Queen likes cheese. Mm. Margaret Thatcher finding out she's lactose intolerant. That's just a bit. Join an audience with the Queen. That's a little random. She, I feel like she would have known that beforehand. Yeah. Well. Okay, let's say the first and second one are true. Third one's false. I feel like the US probably has some government cheese. Because you know how they calculate inflation mm. in this country? They um, they have a bunch of stuff in a basket. And the first one was definitely right, because but, I think that was the cost they, of cheese um, back we're then. We're talking £300 of government cheese. Three, no, not Ooh. 300 £3 three million. Pounds. That three sounds hun- three, too high. £300 million. Pounds. But, mm. you know, For who, that, that decade's money, bear in mind Who was as well. the president at the time? Maybe, the, maybe he really Ra- liked cheese. Good Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Margaret Thatcher finding out she's like lactose intolerant. Well, as the lie. As the mm-hmm. lie. And He's doing the same as me, basically. Yeah, yeah so you're both... Uh, you're both 80s expert. Margaret Thatcher did not um, find out she was lactose intolerant during a Queen's meeting. Yeah. Well done. Um, yeah, uh, America did have government cheese. Um, it was controlled <laughs> by the US government um, from World War II to the early 80s. The government cheese was was created to maintain the price of dairy when dairy industry sub, um, subsidised artificially increased milk. That's what they do in this country yeah. to control inflation. Yeah. And they've got 150 warehouses across 35 states. And if you see here, here is Ronald Reagan with, with a bit cheese. of government cheese. See, love if, that. If, if, yeah. if you obviously looked at that from a distance, you'd think he was holding up like a gold bar. That's great for radio so, listeners yeah, showing so, us a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Guys, would just like to picture this in your mind's mind's eye. So, yeah. So that and that was it. And yeah, the so, price yeah. of cheese was 198p. So let me get my record player ready so we could close out the show. Ryan, thanks for coming on for our 80s mm. hour. Thank you. Yeah. Of the 80s special. So, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed having me on. Yeah, so, yeah we'd love to have you on again. I need to come on here for the, the full time, yeah. Finding for, for closing question. For just We can push over a minute. Um, why do you love the 80s and what's your favourite 80s memory? Favourite 80s memory? From back in the day. From back Down in the pit, day. Yeah. Um, why do I love the 80s? Um, because of since after the 60s and 70s and all the kind of protests and stuff mm-hmm. that happened during that time, you know, the world, you know, wanted actively to become a much happier place. You think about the fashion, you think about the music, obviously yeah. the launch of electronic music and stuff, you know, um, the world wanted to become a better place. And I love the kind of vibrance and just, you know, the positivity of the decade you know what i mean Mm -hmm. not to mention everything else music and fashion you know culture and stuff like that as well so um yeah you know and it was a much brighter decade not just in terms of like what people were wearing and everything like that but the attitude was much brighter Mm -hmm. much more positive optimistic look look on the world even though it wasn't obviously Mm -hmm. politically perfect you know um you know but obviously some cared some didn't it was a very different time wasn't it because it was a much simpler time you know the aspect ratio was different (laughs) (laughs) it was was yeah yeah yeah. everyone saw everything in four by three Hmm. yeah uh the resolution was a lot lower back then but you saw it well, that was through, normal it's just like CRT, you know you, so didn't you didn't know any difference yeah. so it was just like yeah. that was life you know yeah. you didn't think about oh no in tw- 20 years time this is what we would have we just lived yeah. it for in what it was in 20 years time we'll be able to see full HD resolution in real life yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah by about 2005 we'll be able to see in, in different so. aspect ratios like Wide 16 screen. by 9 yeah so yeah. We knew the technology would come eventually, but we just, you know, we lived it just like you're living now for what you're living now. It's just how it is. So you lived that for how you lived it. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, Ryan. You're welcome. Uh, What was the other question you asked? Oh, yeah. Your favorite memory from the 80s. Favorite memory. Uh, 
clubbing. Clubbing. Yeah. What were the clubs like in the 80s? <laughs> yeah. Well, there were much cleaner and nicer places to be than they are now. Yeah. And you, you can tell us that from experience. I can tell you that from experience, yeah. yeah 100%, nice. guys. Can you tell I'm being honest? Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, much nicer, much simpler places. And it, they were, you know, there were places you properly got dressed up to go to, whereas a lot of people kind of, you know, admittedly yeah. half arse it now. Yeah. Guys, girls, and a lot of it, a lot of just not very nice stuff happens in places like that now. Whereas that, you went there... You had a good time. You danced. You met people. You exchanged phone numbers if you were lucky um, with women, um, and um, you just had an you know you just had a great time. And you yeah. made an effort. That was the point. You made an effort. And like yeah. I go to when I go to clubs with that music, I make an effort like you did back in the day. Yeah, you know, I know a lot of people who were around in the eighties, and they they tell me you know life was way better when you could smoke indoors. Exactly. You yeah. know, as long as it thing is. N- I'm it's not, not the same if I'm just yeah. killing myself. I need to be killing everyone else too. The thing is, if you had a window open, it wasn't a big deal. People didn't care. It's if you didn't have a window open, people were like, oh, please, can you just open a window? This is getting horrible. So it depends on your opinion on uh, smokers. I, I'm I'm not a smoker. I obviously Neither don't want to smoke. Mm. But I, I think it should be up to the pub to decide if it's Individual a places, yeah. yeah. Obviously, I feel like you can't say family friendly if it's a smoking pub. Because like, <laughs> yeah. you know, if you're going for your family well. I fully agree. I think there should be designated places you could go to, like a pub that has a smoking license where it's 18 plus only. So like smoking pubs, non-smoking yeah, like, pubs. Or, like yeah. a smoking area what's inside. like the. Yeah, I'd get a big cigar, go smoke in, yeah. in the bowling green. Yeah, the you know, bowling green. Back then, if it, I don't know how long that pub's been there, but it probably, yeah, you did allow smoking in that, there. That pub's probably so, been there since the 1880s. <laughs> it looks like it's been there at least... At least like 40, 50 years. At so. least since the 1980s, yeah. Yeah, so you could probably smoke in there back then, but obviously then you couldn't because government policies, eh? Yeah, so, government policies so ruining. It was like, no, this is unhealthy. You can't do this in here. Even if you've got windows open, it's not right. good. So, and there you go. That's why they banned it. So, yeah. just for health, health and safety and stuff. Like, I get that, but like, come on. If you've got, if you've got windows open, does it really matter? Yeah. You know? Yeah, so agree. that's the lesson to learn. You're allowed to smoke around your children as long as you've got the window open. <laughs> yeah. Coming right. straight this is from Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yes. encouraging good this parenting. Is what Ryan, this is what Ryan is saying. It, it, we've turned his mic off so he can't say any more horrible things about smoking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, Ryan says smoke around your kids but leave the window open for their, for yeah. their benefit. Thank you for listening to the <laughs> Aces special. We now have Wishing I Was Lucky, <laughs> as your children will be lucky if you smoke with the window open. Thank Bye you, Ryan, for the wisdom and coming on the show today. You've been a great guest.